Okay, let's go. So we, um, three, four. So we have to read Hebrews chapter 11, verses five and six. We're just going through Hebrews 11. Just uh, want us to get a real feel of uh, the fact that um, people in the Old Testament also walked by faith in God. And you know, the, the chapter 11 just highlights different ones. So let's read it, please. Verse five and six of Hebrews 11. Somebody could read that for us. Verse 5, by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Mm. Thank you. So the next person, so, you know, literally uh, the writer of Hebrews is, uh, you know, starting from the very beginning, Abel, and then he's, you know, he's going one after the other and saying, hey, right from then, people were people, people walked with faith in God. So he's talking about Enoch, and he says, you know, Enoch, by faith, he was taken up, uh, taken away, that he didn't die. Now, it doesn't mean that he used his faith to go to heaven. But what it means is, in his day, Enoch walked with such faith in God that he pleased God. The end of that verse. He had this testament that he pleased God. So e Enoch walked in such a manner that he so pleased God by faith. Enoch, by faith, walked in such a manner that he so pleased God that God decided to just take him. Right? And then he goes on into verse 6 and tells us, tell, teaches us that it is faith that pleases God. Right? He's already mentioned that in verse 2 because he said, look, it's by faith you get a good report from God. But he's now bringing that same truth out in this context of pleasing God. So Enoch, by faith, he walked in such a way he pleased God. So did people in the Old Testament please God? Yeah, they, they pleased God. How do they please God? By the works? No, by faith. By faith in God, they pleased. And of course, faith in God then uh, uh, enabled them to live a life that uh, pleased God. And they were caught up. Enoch was caught up. Uh, verse 6, it says, so he's saying, understand this. That without faith, it's impossible to please God. I mean, there's no, or you can put it another way, there's no other way to please God. No other way. We have to walk by faith. Or we can say this, faith pleases God. When you and I live by faith in God, His word, His promise, it actually pleases God. God says, I love it. I love to see my people, my children, walk with faith in me. So faith pleases God. And it says, well, when you come to God, I'm, I'm looking at verse 6. When you come to God, you must believe that he is. You must have faith that he exists. So how do you know that God exists? I have faith. Faith is the conviction of things not seen. And my faith says, God is, God exists. Now, is there tangible proof to the existence of God? Yes. First big tangible proof is all of creation. Uh, Romans chapter 1, it says, you know, the invisible attributes of God are revealed to us in creation so that we are without excuse. Because nobody can say, I didn't know God was there. God says, hello, all of creation is a big evidence that I am here. And all my invisible attributes are revealed in creation. For, for instance, somebody might ask, why is there such a big universe? Because 
the universe is expressing this attribute of God, that God is infinite. So when he creates something, he has to create something that expresses who he is. He's infinite. So that's why the universe is so big. It's infinite. We don't even know. You know, what's beyond the universe? There could be other universes. We don't. So it's infinite. Why? Because God is infinite. Why there's so many billions and billions and billions of stars? Because God is so big, right? So the invisible attributes of God are revealed in his creation. So he says here, Hebrews 11, 6, when we come to God first, we believe that he exists. I know God is because I believe, I believe, I have faith, faith that God exists. Secondly, he says you must also believe that he rewards those who diligently seek him. That means the time, the energy, the effort that you are making to seek him is not wasted because you believe. You and I believe that God rewards those who diligently seek him. So when you are diligently seeking him, what does it mean to be diligent? It means to be consistently consistent in seeking him. That means you don't just seek him one day. But diligence is expressed through consistency. But on the second day and the third day and the fourth week and the fifth week, you're constantly you're diligently seeking God. You're earnestly, consistently seeking God. Why do you do it? Because you're convinced, you have faith that he will reward those who diligently seek him. So our faith, our faith helps us to understand this, that we are pleasing God when we walk in faith. Secondly, we have faith that God exists. Thirdly, that God rewards us for diligently seeking him. Right? So that's verse 6. By faith, this is what we believe. Right? Verse 7 and 8. Someone else? By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, most with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Verse 8, mm. by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And as he went out, not knowing where he was going. Yeah. So Noah was another hero of faith. And what did Noah do? God spoke to him ahead of time of something the earth had not yet seen. So God spoke to him, said, Noah, there's going to become a flood. So I want you to build an ark. The earth had never seen a flood. Noah probably didn't even understand what a flood was. They never seen it, never experienced it. And so God spoke to him of something no one had yet experienced, and he built an ark. And the Bible says, by faith, he did it. So today, you and I, maybe God speaks to us of things yet to come. And he says, I want you to do take this action because of something that is going to come. Right? And so you and I, by faith, do it. That's what Noah did. And then verse 8, Abraham. Abraham was a great man of faith. In fact, the Bible calls him the father of faith. And in, in the, in the uh, next chapter, uh, we're going to focus in on the faith of Abraham. How did he have faith in God? So verse 8, by faith, Abraham. Now what did Abraham do? Abraham obeyed. And, uh, and what, what do we know about Abraham's faith? The last part of verse 8 says, he went out not knowing where he was going. And just think about that. Abraham went out not knowing where he was going. So he obeyed, but he didn't have all the answers. 
And that's faith. So faith obeys God, even when you don't have all the answers. Because he didn't know where he was going. He did, God just said, Abraham, get up, go to a land that I will show you. So he got up and it was a daily walk of faith. Day by day, he was journeying with God and finally God, you know, he, he came to the place that God said, that's the place I'm going to give you as an inheritance. But it was a walk of faith because he really didn't know where he was going. So can you and I today obey God even when we don't have all the answers, even when we don't know everything about the future, but you obey God. That's what Abraham did. Abraham obeyed. He trusted God, that God will give him this inheritance, although he didn't know how he's going to get into that inheritance. He obeyed. He, he went out not knowing where he was going, didn't have all the answers. And God calls you and me to walk by faith in a similar manner today. Right? You just obey, and you know that God will give that to you. But you don't know exactly how to get there. You don't know all the don't have all the answers of how you're going to get there and how it's going to be done and how God's going to give it to you. You don't have all the answers, but it's okay. You just obey God; He'll get you there. That's what Abraham did. Verse nine and ten. Verses nine and ten, please. By faith he dwelt in the land of promise, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents and tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs, of, heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city, which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Mm. So, thank you. So when he came into the land of promise, which he did, you know, so Abraham basically began his journey up somewhere near the river Euphrates, uh, modern day Iraq, and then he made his journey down south into modern day Israel. So he came into this land of promise and he lived in tents with Isaac and Jacob. In other words, God is saying, This is the land I'm giving you, but right now you're dwelling, you're dwelling there in temporary, you know, dwellings in tents. And God said, this is the land I'm giving you. So you're tasting of it, but uh, at the moment, everything seems temporary. But verse 10 says, he was waiting for a city whose foundations was a builder and maker is God. So he's in the land of promise, but he's dwelling there temporarily in temporary dwellings and he's waiting for God to fulfill the promise and make it permanent. So that's another aspect of walking by faith. That is, you're journeying, you're coming into the promise, but then you're going through what may be temporary while you're waiting for what is permanent. The, the finality of everything. So Abraham did that by faith. So God, okay, I'm here. I know I'm dwelling in tents, but I know this land, you will give me a city that you have established. You will give me a permanent dwelling here. Right? You will do it. So even so, this is talking about our journey of faith, that you're going through temp the temporary, believing God for the permanent. Verse, uh, verses 11 and 12. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. Amen. Mm. Amen. Powerful verses. You know, verse 11, Sarah. It says, by faith, by faith, Sarah. She received a work of God done in her physical body. So, or physical healings there in the Old Testament, of course, many of them. And Sarah is one example. She received a healing taking place in her body. 
because it says here uh, she was past age. That means she was barren and she was old. So she had two problems. One is she was barren. She never had children even in her young age. But at this time she was old. So, but when she had faith, it overrode those natural limitations and she conceived and bore a child. Why? Because it says in verse 11, she judged him faithful who had promised. She judged him faithful who had promised. Now, when we look back at Sarah's journey of faith, she also started from the place of no faith. And she came to the place of little faith. And then she came to this place of full faith. So how do we know? Because remember, if you read the story of Abraham and Sarah, you know, in the beginning, Sarah was the one who said, maybe somebody else born in my house would be the descendant God is speaking about. So even she didn't think that she would have a child. She thought somebody else would have a child. Then God had to correct that and say, no, 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 Sarah, you're going to have a child. And when the angel of the Lord came and said, you know, Sarah, you're going to have a child, she laughed. Right? So she like, how is it possible? You know, so her reaction was one of disbelief. So she went, she was still in a place of little faith. But eventually she came to this place where Hebrews 11, 11 was true. That means she counted him faithful had promised. So somehow she, over that 25 year period, she made that journey from no faith to little faith to complete faith. She judged him faithful, but promised. And then she received strength to conceive seed and she bore Isaac. And so we see uh, a physical miracle through faith. We also see a journey uh, uh, in, in progressive, increasing faith. In the life of Sarah. And then it goes back to Abraham, verse 12. I think this is such an amazing verse. It says, Here is a man who is as good as dead, and yet from a man who's as good as dead comes a nation as new with like the stars in the sky and like the sand on the seashore. Can you imagine? He has a man who's dead. Like nobody expects anything from him. He's as good as dead. There's no life. And yet from such a man, something impossible comes out. Descendants like the stars and like the sand on the seashore. How? By faith. So it tells us, you know, this is what happens by faith when people have said dead nothing can happen it's over then god releases something so beautiful so powerful it staggers human understanding okay so verse 12 verse 13 and 14 All these people were still living by faith when they died. They didn't receive the peace promise. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things so that they are looking for a country of their, of their own. Mm. So the writer of Hebrews says, you know, these people had faith even for their future. God had given them promise. They were journeying into it, but they, you know, they didn't come into the fulfillment of everything. Because he, he will explain this later on towards the end of this chapter that God wanted all of us to enjoy the fulfillment together. Okay. So they saw things happen in their lifetime. They saw the work of God. Um, they saw certain things fulfilled. But there were still things that they saw afar off, which they didn't experience. And they died without those things. 
So you and I can also imagine, even in our journey of faith, for instance, all of us expect to be in heaven. All of us expect that we will have a mansion in heaven. All of us expect that one day uh, we will rule and reign with Jesus uh, in, in the millennium. All of us believe that there will be new heavens and the new earth. But today, we are only seeing them from afar. But yet we embrace them as so they are real. That's what these people did. They embraced and confessed them. So you and I embrace these things. We confess it. Yes, I believe there's a mansion for me in heaven. Yes, I believe I'm going to see Jesus. Yes, I believe, you know, we embrace and confess these things. But yet, we know we will die should the Lord tarry. We will die. And we're not going to taste those things here. The same thing with these Old Testament saints. They experienced certain things in their lifetime, which God wanted them to fulfill. But they were also looking at things into the future, which they embraced and confessed, but they didn't experience. Same thing with you and me today. In our journey of faith, we embrace and we confess things that we believe that are out there. And we, we, we're going to die. We may never experience it. Or we will not experience it in this side of life. But Hebrews 11, when it closes, it says, together, the Old Testament saints, New Testament saints, together we will enjoy these things. A city whose builder and maker is God. Revelation chapter 22. Okay. That's the heavenly Jerusalem. Together, the Old Testament saints, New Testament saints, together will experience that. Okay, So it's teaching us here in, in verses 13 and 14 that faith enables us to walk today, our life on earth, embracing and confessing things about our life in the future. Just like them, so do we. Okay? Verse 15 and 16. Verses 15 and 16, please. Uh, verse 15. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to, opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Mm. Very interesting. You know, I like how the end of verse six, uh, the verse uh, verse sixteen ends. God, therefore, therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. So, isn't that interesting? Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. God is saying, like, hey, I'm really happy if you if you say. I am your God. Therefore, meaning on what basis? Verse 15 and 16 tells us that these were people who were not looking at their earthly things. But it says in verse 16, they were desiring a heavenly thing. That means they lived their life with their eyes, not on the temporal, but on the eternal. They lived their life on earth as pilgrims, people just passing by. They lived their life on earth, holding to things on earth very lightly, because their eyes and focus was on the heavenly. And to such people, God says, I am not ashamed to be called their God. Because it is true, I have prepared a city for you. That's the heavenly, the eternal, the unseen. You all with me so far? You're understanding these things? So we are learning about 
you know, uh, the faith that pleases God, Hebrews chapter 11. And this, these are the different aspects of faith, the faith life that's being highlighted. Okay. Uh, verses 17 and 18. I'm trying to go a little fast because uh, uh, we want to finish this. Verses 17 and 18. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac, your seed shall be called. Mm, thank you. So now, another aspect of faith. Abraham was tested by God. So, just a side note here. There's a difference between a test and a temptation. A test comes from God. A temptation is from the devil. A test is for us to move to a new level. A temptation is for us to go down. Test is for us to go up. Temptation is to pull us down. So Genesis 22 verse 1. God tested Abraham. A test calls us into a greater level of obedience. A temptation always induces us to a greater level of disobedience. Okay, so these are two separate things. When God tested Abraham, so here it's saying that Abraham responded to God's test by faith. So how do you and I pass the tests of God by faith? And in Abraham's case, the test was, Abraham, I've given you Isaac, but can you offer Isaac up as a sacrifice? In other words, the real test was, do you still believe my promise, my word? That's the real test. God's tests are an invitation to a greater place of faith. Do you still believe my word to you? And the Bible says here, Abraham responded, saying, yes, God. Even if I offer Isaac as a sacrifice, you have to raise him up. Because your word says, in Isaac, because God had given his word, Isaac is the seed through which the promise will be fulfilled. And Abraham believed. That means he had come to this place where he was, he just believed the word, the word of God. The God had spoken, it will be so. And that's why he was able to go up to the mount to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. And God said, that's it, don't kill the son. You've passed my test. That means your faith is still in the word. It also tells us one thing. Before receiving the promise, our eyes are on the word of God, the promise of God. After we receive the promise, our eyes must still remain on the promise of God. Maybe you and I are believing God for something, looking at the word, the promise of God. Lord, I believe my needs will be met or I believe my body will be healed or, you know, whatever. And then God fulfills that promise. You receive it. Don't take your eyes off the word of God and put it on what you have received. No. Keep your eyes on the word of God. Keep your eyes always on God and his word, not on the blessing. That's what Abraham did. And that's why he was willing to let go of the blessing because he knew if he let go of the blessing, God still has to keep bring the blessing because God is faithful to his word. Okay. Verses 19 and 20, please. Concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from which he also received, received him in a figurative sense. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. Mm -hmm. 
So verse 19 is actually the continuation of Abraham's faith, that uh, when Abraham obeyed God, uh, his, he was believing that God would raise him up from the dead. Verse 20 is talking about Isaac, that Isaac could bless Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. So by faith, basically by faith, Isaac, uh, Jake, Isaac prophesied over Jacob and Esau. So if you want to just put verse 20 very simply, by faith, Isaac prophesied over his two sons. That means he spoke of things that were still in the future. Verses 21 and 22. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. Hmm. So you see some similarity between Isaac, Jacob and Joseph. All three of them, by faith, spoke of things in the future. They believed it, and they spoke of it. So Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau on concerning the future. Jacob, he blessed all the sons of Joseph, speaking of their future, declaring their God's uh, plan for their future. Same thing with Joseph. He was dying, but he spoke. Hey, you, you know, he was in Egypt, but he said, God's going to take you back to your land, to the land, take my bones and bury me there. Right? So he's, all, oh, he's speaking of something out in the future. So by faith, uh, you know, we are speaking forth prophetically, we are speaking forth the purposes of God. Um, verses 23 and 24, please. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born, because they saw he was no ordinary child, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. 24. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Thank you. Let's just go on and read um, um, the next two verses. Let's we'll read this full passage concerning uh, Moses. Uh, verses 25 and 26, somebody else? He chose to misunderstand, mistreat along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of the sin for a short time. He regarded disgrace for the sake of the Christ as a greater value than the treasures of the Egypt because he was looking ahead of his reward. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's comment on this. So Moses, uh, here we read about Moses' parents. Again, they acted in the present, believing God for the future, right? It says uh, they hid him. They were not afraid of the king's command. Why? They saw he was a beautiful child. I mean, they saw something in him. They said, okay, we're not going to let go of this child. We don't want to you know, end this child's life. So that was an act of faith on the part of Moses' parents, right? And then about Moses himself, that was 24, 25, uh, and 26, that though he, you know, he grew up in uh, the house of Pharaoh, he had all of these things, he let go of all of that to step into what he believed was God's call, right? So he, he believed that God had called him to be a deliverer of the people of Israel in his heart. So he let go of all the riches of Egypt and he said, I'm gonna step in there to be a deliverer of my people. Uh, so that is really expressing, you know, that he said, I don't wanna enjoy the pleasures of Egypt. He could have stayed there and maybe he could have become the next Pharaoh uh, uh, and ruling over Egypt. He said, no, I'm letting all of that go. I'm going to go out and I'm going to identify with God's people and, uh, you know, uh, move into the call of God. So that's what he, uh, Moses did. In, that's verses 25 and 26. Um, he, he looked for the reward. He's looking for a future reward. So that's what God also leads us to do today, that uh, you know, there are times God calls us to make these kinds of choices. And we do that. We let go of 
things that we could enjoy in order to pursue the call of God on our lives and to fulfill what God wants us to do. Right? Let's uh, look at verses 27 and 20, uh, 27 to 29, please. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. And one verse 29 also. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. Mm. So each of these, which we, you know, we read in the Old Testament, were acts of faith. So by faith, Moses stepped out of Egypt. Why did he do that? Because it says he was seeing him who was invisible. Right? So... He was not afraid. So that's basically saying he's stepping out of Egypt, going out of Egypt was an act of faith. And the reason he did it is because his eyes was on the invisible God. By faith, they even kept the Passover. So God had spoken, do this. But for them to do that was an act of faith. So it says they kept the Passover by faith and you know God protected them. By faith, they crossed the Red Sea. Uh, and, and each of these, you know, you, we know the stories connected with each of these, how they were standing before the Red Sea and, you know, God says, Moses, stretch out your rod and the, and the sea parts and they cross over uh, the Red Sea. And so this is that also was an act of faith. So when you look at all of these things, the writer of Hebrews is saying, hey, you look at the people in the Old Testament, they were all people of faith and they did all these things by faith in God. So they were people of faith. Right? Let's just uh, quickly try to finish up. Uh, let's read uh, verses 30 to 34, please. 30 to 34, somebody. By faith, walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spice with peace. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and the writer of Hebrews, is, he, you know, he started sort of listing one by one. Uh, then he says, you see, even the walls of Jericho came down by faith. And we know the story. They had to march around it, you know, seven days. Uh, that was an act of faith. Right? They obeyed the word of God. Joshua disobeyed what the angel of the Lord told him. And they, you know, it was an act of faith. And they saw the result. Uh, and then he begins to mention different people. Rahab the harlot, you know, how she would receive these spies because she believed God would protect her, even though she was, you know, a Gentile. Uh, then he mentions, hey, th there's Gideon, there's Barak, there's Samson, there's all these people. And through their faith in God, they did great things in their day and time. You know, so he mentions, you know, they, they conquered kingdoms, they received the promises, they stopped the mouths of lions, and they escaped the edge of the fire. And so all these great things in their lifetime they did by faith so people throughout the old testament they also walked by faith in god they believed the word they did the same things you and i are called to do today okay uh, let's continue we'll read from verse uh, 35 to 40 yeah let's finish it verses 35 to 40 please Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mocking and scourging, yes, 
and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn into two, they were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in desert and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise, God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Mm. So, uh, the writer of Hebrews, he lists some you know, amazing accomplishments um, that you know, women receive the dead race life again, uh, and so on. That means great things happen through faith. But then he also shifts emphasis and says, hey, but also endurance, the ability to endure, the ability to stand strong through adversity, the ability to go through persecution and difficulties in life is also a work of faith. Right? So there is there are two sides to this. On the one hand, we see the miraculous, we see the supernatural, we see the wonderful works of God. That is by that is also through faith. But the other side is we go through the hardships of life, we go through the persecutions, the difficulties of life, that also takes place through faith. That is also a work of faith. Right. So I, I want us to keep that in mind that. And while, you know, the supernatural displays of God's power and glory are expressions of faith, don't forget that when, when, when you and I are when God's people actually make this journey of endurance, going through hardship, that is also an expression of faith. Don't only think about the miracles. Miracles are true, but also the ability to endure going through challenges, difficulties, hardships. That is also an expression of faith. And then he says, you know, about the Old Testament people, they all lived by faith, uh, verse 39, and they got a good testimony. So again, that's uh, that's what he mentioned in Hebrews 11, verse 2. That means God gave them a good report through faith. But they didn't see the culmination of the great things that God had in store. Why? Because God kept that for us. Right? He's kept it for us. And he wants that he wants to make sure that they together with us will enjoy what he has prepared for us which he's referring to all the good things that will come out in the future right uh, we are going to be with the lord in heaven uh, we're going to rule and reign with him here on earth uh, we are going to step into the new heavens and the new earth so all that we are going to enjoy together, both the Old Testament, New Testament saints. Okay. But Hebrews chapter 11, it's in the New Testament, but it's actually talking to us about the Old Testament. It's talking to us about all the Old Testament saints and says, hey, look at these people, different things they did. They did it through faith. Okay. Now, I'm just going to quickly... Uh, share my notes. I know we have only a few more minutes, but uh, in this in this PDF, uh, I have already mentioned it as we went through Hebrews 11, but I'll just highlight those things. So we looked at the whole chapter, Hebrews 11. Um, so what did we mention? Walking in faith gives us a good testimony before God, right? So this is how we obtain a good testimony. When we walk by faith, God sees and God himself gives us a good report. Right? Second, we live by faith in the promise of future things. Right? So just as much we have faith for the now, we also have faith for the future, like we already shared. And then we see that uh, through faith, the people inherited the land of promise. That means what God has promised for us now, we also inherit. So there are things that we will walk into here and now in this life by faith, but we also have faith for things God has kept for us in the future. And, uh, you know, it talks about David. 
you know, uh, I just highlighted here, we can highlight each of these people, Gideon and all of them. But, you know, if you look at David and how a shepherd killed a warrior, uh, it's just an amazing, um, amazing story of how a David, uh, all odds, you know, when we, when we put it in our, in our language today, we will say the odds were against David. You know, so imagine uh, David going out there facing Goliath. I had David facing Goliath. Who's going to win? Well, most people say, hey, Goliath's going to win. David is an inexperienced young boy. Goliath is a soldier who's been trained up from his early days. And they're meeting in man-to-man -man combat. Who's going to win? But it says, through faith. David. That means we kill our Goliaths, just like how David did, through faith in God. And God takes what we have, what he has put in our life, and he uses it to conquer the Goliaths that you and I might have to face in life. So I just want to leave us with that thought here. You see, there are things that God wants to do through each of us. There are Goliaths that he wants to kill, that he wants us to conquer, and how are you and I going to conquer the Goliaths we face? Just like David, through faith. Through faith, we will conquer every Goliath that we face. So what we're going to learn in this course is going to help you and me, like David, conquer Goliaths and do great exploits for the kingdom of God. Okay? So we'll pause here. Uh, next week, we'll get into chapter 7, where we look at the faith of Abraham, and we're going to study the steps of faith. Uh, how, if you, want, you and I want to exercise faith, what are the steps we must take in order to exercise faith in God? We will learn that from uh, Abraham. All right? I would like to invite somebody to please uh, close in prayer, and then we will dismiss for our break. Could somebody just pray with us as a class and dismiss us? Father, we come to the throne of grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, your son, we ask for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I pray for all my teachers and my fellow student body. We thank God for your grace. We came till here, oh God. We we thank you for each and everything. We started on 2nd August, oh God. And today, on 3rd September, we have completed your one month by the grace of God. May it continue forever. And may, Lord, your grace and your guidance be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thank you uh, for being on the class today. Have a good break. Enjoy your next hour. I'll see you again next week. God bless. Thank you.